In this lesson, we'll be going over just some basic operations, addition, subtraction, and some multiplication when dealing with matrices. So first of all, we're going to start with equal matrices. Uh, they have the same dimensions, and they have equal corresponding elements. Um, so this is a quick example. Find the value of W, X, Y, and Z such that this matrix equals this matrix. Well, seen as if they're equal, each element has to be the same, so this 3w has to be equal to negative 6. So we can write a little equation 3 here. 3w equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 3. So w has to equal negative 2. Uh, 2 equals 2. 2x equals 8. First row, third column equals first row, third column. So 2x equals 8. So obviously x has to equal 4. Uh, going through 5 equals 5, 0 equals 5y, which then y definitely has to equal 0. And lastly, 4 has to equal z, so we can just write z equals 4. So we found the values of w, x, y, and z because the matrices are equal, so all corresponding parts are equal. Matrix addition and subtraction to add or subtract matrices with the same dimensions. Um, so they have to be the same dimensions, like a 2 by 3 and a 2 by 3. Add or subtract their corresponding elements. So just going to do some adding and subtracting, given n is negative 2, 3, 7, negative 1, and n is 0, 6, 9, negative 1. Find m plus n. Well, m plus n, we're going to write m here, negative 2, 3, 7, negative 1, plus n, 0, 6, 9, negative 1. And we add the corresponding part. So this is going to equal negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. 3 plus 6 is 9. 7 plus 9 is 16. And negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. So there is the sum of matrix M and N. Now we can do N minus M. So we'll take N, which is 0, 6, 9, negative 1 minus m, which is negative 2, 3, 7, negative 1. And we're going to subtract, so make sure we're aware of the subtraction here. 0 minus negative 2. So 0 minus negative 2 is like 0 plus 2, which is 2. 6 minus 3 is 3. 9 minus 7 is 2, and negative 1 minus negative 1. So negative 1 minus a negative is like plus, so negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So there's the difference of n and m. Scalar multiplication. So the product r, so just some number r times a matrix A, is found by multiplying each element of matrix A by r. So here we go. We have 3m. Um, so it's going to be the way that we can write this is 3 on the outside and then negative 2, 3, 7, negative 1. And by definition, scalar multiplication, you just multiply 3 times each element. Negative 6, 9, 21, and negative 3. There's that answer. This one we want to do negative 2 times m. So I'll do that down here. Negative 2 times m. And that is going to equal negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. And negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. And there's the answer to part b. Now this one combines a few things, so we want to do one-third n plus 5m. So we want to do one-third times n, 0, 6, 9, and negative 1. 
and then we're going to do 5 times n plus 5 times n. So order of operations still remains the same. You want to do multiplication before addition and subtraction. And so we can do 1 third times each of these. So 1 third times 0 is 0. 1 third of 6 is 2. 1 third of 9 is 3. 1 third of negative 1 is negative 1 third. Plus, and now we're going to multiply 5 times each of these. So negative 10. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 7, 35, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And now we're down to addition. They are uh, the same dimension, so we can add these. 0 plus negative 10 is negative 10. 2 plus 15 is 17. 3 plus 35 is 38. And negative 1 third plus negative 5 is negative 5 and 1 third. And there is our answer for that one. Here's some properties that have to do with scalars. Um, the identity, so 1 times any matrix is still that matrix. Um, commutative R times the matrix is the same as the matrix times R. Associative, you can actually multiply your scalars together first and then multiply by the matrix or you can do S times the matrix and take that matrix and multiply it by R. Um, this is distributive. Uh, the A could actually be in front here, but A times R or R times A equals S times A or distributive. You could have the scalar on the outside and the matrices added together. Um, zero times anything equals zero. And closure, R times A is still an n by n matrix. It will never change dimensions if you multiply a matrix uh, times a scalar. In a matrix equation, the variable represents a matrix solved by using the properties similar to solving algebraic equations. So solve for x. So we want to solve for x. It's a capital X. It's going to be a matrix. So we can subtract from both sides this 2, 1, 3, 3, 5, 1. Subtract 2, 1, 3, 3, 5, 1. And when we subtract matrices, we subtract their corresponding parts. So we still have negative 2x equals 3 minus 2 is 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 1 minus 3, negative 2. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Well, we want to solve for x, so we can multiply both sides. We don't really put division here. We multiply by negative 1 half. So we multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply by negative 1 half. And when we multiply by negative 1 half, uh, on the left, we're just left with x. And on the right, this is scalar multiplication. Negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half. Negative half of 4 is negative 2. Negative half times negative 1 is positive 1 half. Negative half times negative 2 is 1. Negative half times negative 1 is positive 1 half. And negative half times 0 is 0. So matrix X is... Uh, negative one half, negative two, one half, one, one half, zero. The last thing we're going to look at: uh, solid state drivers. SSDs have replaced hard drives, and notebook computers, and many other devices. An SSD manufacturer tracks the sales data from stores in Boston and Chicago. The manufacturer wants to increase total sales by fifty percent. Um, Create matrices B and C representing the sales in Boston and Chicago. So let's start with that. So matrix B, we can just have a two by two. Just we have to realize what we have here, 78, 89, 31, 
and 19. So matrix B represents the June sales of 120 gigs um, in July and then June of 256 in July of 19. Matrix C is going to be the sales for Chicago, same idea, 102 in June, 97 in July, 47 and 33. So that was part A. Add the matrices to obtain T, a matrix representing total sales. Well, we're going to add these together. You could probably do this just thinking about a cross here. So this is a company, they want to know their total sales altogether. So we'll do 78 times one or plus 102. So it says add them, which gives us 180. 89 plus 97. Uh, that's going to be 186. 31 plus 47. That'll be 78. And 33 plus 19 is 52. Create G, a matrix representing the goal in total sales. Well, they want to increase sales by 50%. So we want to increase by 50%. So instead of, so this would be like 100% of what we have now. If we want to increase by 50%, we want to multiply that by 1.5. So we're going to take uh, 1.5 times matrix T. So that's 180, 186, 78, and 52. Uh, so 1.5 times 180 is 270. Over here, 270. Uh, one and a half times 186. 279, 279, uh, 78 times one and a half, it's 117, and 52 times one and a half is 78. So if they can increase their numbers in the different months, to total this, uh, this is what their goals would be, total goals. And they said to name that G, so this equals G. And there's uh, just an introduction to the elementary operations for matrices.